Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode seven of Firewood Media Cast. And today I'm joined by Zach Menzies of Menzies Productions. Um, so, Zach, tell us a bit about yourself. You know, who are you? Well, I'm Zach Menzies, like you said, and uh, I'm a filmmaker uh, from southern Wisconsin, and I enjoy lots of action, drama, thrillers, and just the kind of a smorgasbord of ideas that I like to make all myself with the help of friends and family. What got you into filmmaking in the first place? You know, what's odd about it is that I never really enjoyed watching movies growing up. Even now, I just, I don't have the attention span to sit there and watch like a two hour movie. I just find most of them boring, which is kind of odd for my hobby. I guess like the first start of my love for filmmaking was when I would go to sleepovers with my cousins. And you remember iMovie? Like the, I do, I do, yeah. You know, like the feature uh, that you could make like movie trailers and stuff? Yes, yeah. So my cousin had an iPad and we used to spend nights making like just crappy trailers of like horror films and action films and superheroes. And uh, as a kid, it was so much fun. Uh, and that's kind of the start, the, like the soonest beacon that I can think of that started my love for filmmaking. Just making like crappy trailers and <laughs> videos. That's interesting. I've never even heard something like that before. Normally, you know, it's like, oh, I saw this movie. I saw that movie. And then no, I, don't, I don't watch movies that often. No. Hmm. So, you know, can you recall what some of the movies were, you know, the crappy trailers that you guys would make? Like, yeah, you know, there, there was well, one. Yeah. It's Which funny one? you mentioned that because recently I uh, found an old, old hard drive downstairs and I plugged it into my laptop and I found this old shitty home movie I made. It was called Zacky Chan. <laughs> and it, it was like, it was like, you know, like Jackie Chan, but it was my name, Zacky. Yeah. And I was like the secret agent. And of course, when you're a kid, you don't really have like a production or actors. So I played every single role in that. And it was awful. <laughs> and then I remember I, I edited it on uh, uh, Movie Maker, Windows Movie Maker. And if you know anything about Windows Movie Maker, it, it's awful. Yeah, no it's one music. of the worst. I used to use that for stuff back in the day, and it was just terrible. Yeah. You, you always start out with some program like that. Yeah. For me, it was Movie Maker, and it was bad, but it was a really fun experience that was even more fun to watch all these years later. <laughs> that's that's interesting. Um, yeah. So let's jump a bit forward now. Or, or You know what? Maybe you want to do like a timeline almost, so you know you make these, yeah. these iMovie trailer. You yeah. know, how did you then kind of get from where you were then to now you know kind of give like a bit of a timeline there if you can okay well the earliest was the iMovie trailers uh second zeki chan um third uh let me think i guess third was kind of a jump from the last one when i took a film class in high school it was called mass media you took it too i think right yeah yeah and when i took that class i took it five times actually because i just loved it so much <laughs> um that was that kind of sparked even more of an interest in filmmaking for me because I just had a blast doing that class. I think and you were in one of my classes actually, one was of the I? ones that I because I think because you were doing advanced, I believe, right? Yeah, I, oh yeah, I was. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, because I helped you guys make uh, like the camera angles video, right? That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that class kind of re sparked an interest for filmmaking to me. And like I said, I had a ton of fun. And then senior year, I made my first motion picture that you will never find because it's not good. <laughs> and I never posted it. And uh, it was bad. But, you know, whose first movie is good, you know, especially yeah. in high school. Um, but it was a good experience and I learned a whole lot. And then in 2019, I started my channel. And I think it was 2019. And the rest, I guess, is... Brings us up to date. I make a ton of videos. I've made a few short films. Um, I think my most popular video was a video, like kind of like making fun of or making a spoof on like Liam Neeson movies, like the many cliches of like action Liam Neeson movies, you know? Yeah. And that actually performed pretty well. I think it got like fifty-seven thousand views. It's crazy. And for me, I was like, when I first saw that, I was like, holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Because I never had a video blow up, especially that much, you know? Yeah. So, and, 
Yeah. Oh, sorry. You go. <laughs> oh, no, no. Continue. Sorry. Um, so I was just going to say, so now you're doing Eggs of War. That's your most recent series. You're also making short films. You made a Halloween one recently, and then you just said that you were ma- you made one with your dad about, what was that, a week ago, right, when that came out? Yeah, about a, about a week ago, a week and a half okay. ago. So how is it, like, is it is there a different process for you in making a short film as opposed to making, like, an episode of Eggs of War? You know, how was, how how does the production feel? You know, is there a creative process that's different? For the most part, it's about the same runtime, honestly. Like, I try to aim for, like, 8 to 10 minutes, sometimes 15 at most, you know? Okay. But the creative process is usually pretty much the same. I mean, you know, for Eggs of War, there's, like, a, not a lore, but, like, a, um, an episodic feeling that you want to c- capture. Because, like, how do I word this? Um... It follows the story over, it's going to be about 16 or 17 episodes compared to a short film, which is just the one. Yeah. But I guess the creative process is pretty much not identical, but pretty similar in the sense that I try my best and uh, I I don't even storyboard because I, I hate storyboarding. It's not fun for me. I just, I get on set and I just come up with the ideas on the spot really. Sometimes I'll have like an angle or a shot to my head that I want to like film because I know it will turn out good, hopefully. But for the most part, it's really just run and gun. I'm kind of all about like guerrilla filmmaking in that sense. Uh, yeah, I noticed that too. And I, I have the same mood and the same feeling towards storyboarding. I get why it's useful, but at the same time, I never use storyboarding at all. I, I can't stand it. It's so tedious. Um, But, you know, it's a lot of it's just in my head where I just kind of film that on the spot you know so I, I i get what you mean by that when i had the black magic pocket cinema camera it was awesome for sure it just kind of sucked that there was no autofocus you know because then yeah. i either st- st- stand there and try to get the focus in the exact right spot and then and it doesn't seem like that would take up that much time but when you do that for every single shot it's gonna like collectively take up some time right and I- Twenty A seven C, the camera that I have now, it's much better for me personally. You know, it's more of a run and gun kind of guerrilla style filmmaking uh, tool to use. I get what you mean there for sure. Um, you know, I went from a Nikon D fifty six hundred for my first two features, and then now jumping into a Black Magic, it's a completely different ballpark. You know, you have to, you actually have to frame stuff mostly yourself. You have to focus it in yourself, which I wasn't used to. So, and I'm not trying to diss black magic cameras. They're amazing. Yeah. Yeah. The cameras. For the price, you get what you get your money's worth. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. It's just it wasn't the camera for me personally, you know. hmm I, I I get that, yeah. Um so yeah, let's talk about some of your recent short films. You know, you put yeah, out a um, Halloween one. Let's talk about though the most recent one, you know, that you're just telling me about. Like the 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 fight scene, yeah. I, yes. I called it melee because I was trying to find some like generic like Actiony type uh, synonym for like fight. Yeah, I think I looked up uh, action synonyms on Google <laughs> and I just found melee, and I said, "Hey, that sounds cool." But yeah, my dad and I were bored one night, and I asked him, "Hey, do you want to make a fight scene?" And they said, "Yeah, sure." So we we choreographed it. My my mom filmed it. <laughs> I didn't have anybody else to film, and you're not gonna have like a fight scene on like a static tripod, you know, because yeah. that would. I don't know. But we filmed it, we choreographed it, and that was actually our first time experimenting with a sword that my sister got me, like, a prop sword for my birthday. And we and we used it finally, and that was pretty fun. And we didn't have two swords, so I just, I let my dad use, like, the sheath. I don't know if that's what you call it. Yeah, sheath, yeah. <laughs> so we didn't have two swords, so we had to improvise. But I think it turned out okay. Yeah, I I like the look of it. I like the color grading of it. You know, how do you how do you color grade your stuff? Because I feel like everyone has their own sort of method, their own you know, like what honest, software do you use? You know, what do you how do you do it? Unless I'm making like fishing vlogs or like some type of like commentary video, I do the exact same the exact same color grade for every single video, and it's probably not a good thing. But well, there's no shame in that. You know, it's it works. It's just, I put the curves down. I make like an S shape. Uh, I add like a green tint, maybe some orange. Because, you know, like in movies, like, isn't it like cyan and... Yeah, teal and... It's like teal, uh, and, teal and orange is like the main teal, one. Yeah, teal and orange. That's like the action uh, color grade. And that's I that's what I do for the most part, yeah. 
I maybe add some grain in there to add some like texture, you know, and that's about it. Yeah, because it looks consistent with each one, um, especially, you know, with like Eggs of War episode one and then that fight scene, you know, it looked very consistent. And I think there, there, that's that, that's very special to have, you know, your own kind of color grade thing that you just stick with because not a lot of people are able to really do that, you know? Yeah. Now I'm trying to experiment with like desaturating the colors a little bit because I've been watching The Boys a lot, you know, that show with like the superheroes like Homelander. And they have like this color grade that I love. It's kind of reminds me of like Zack Snyder's color grade and like his movies, just like a desaturated, I don't know how to word it, but you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to go for that now, kind of. So then you also put out a Halloween fan film. You want to talk about that? Yeah. Um, I think right now it's got almost a thousand views, which is awesome for me because um, I really appreciate it. Uh, and we made that a couple months ago and that was actually in the works for a very long time. The scene when I'm in the house, we filmed that months before the shots where I pulled up to the house in the cop car in quotes, my dad's car. And, uh, and the, when I get to the door and the final shot, when I get killed in the, or attacked in the uh, cop car again. So the interiors were filmed months in advance. Okay. Actually. Yeah, it, it looked great, though. You, did you say they used a new, a new, like, lighting rig for that? Because it really looks cinematic. Uh, no, I, I didn't use a new lighting rig. I used... Or what was it, like, a spotlight that you said? Or something like that, right? Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah now I get you. Um, I bought this. It's not even meant for filmmaking. It, I see it right now in my room. It's a construction light meant for, like, work sites. Okay. And I bought it for like 400 bucks and I use it a lot. Like in Eggs War, like the, the fight scene in the climax, I used it for a big spotlight that would like silhouette the actors. And I had like a fog machine in there and it turns it turns out great for the most part. That's cool. Yeah, because I, I was just watching it and it really, it really looks good too when there's like, it's kind of in the background and like it's shining on the actor, you know, and it kind of creates yeah, that yeah. haze around them. I just, it looks phenomenal. I, I didn't use the fog machine for the Halloween one, but um, it was a very fun experience. And my dad was Michael Myers, and I bought a mask for last Halloween, and I thought, hey, I'll, I'll use this. And it was a very fun time. I, I, I had a good time. So, um, you know, how, how's the future looking for you in terms of, you know, projects? You know, what's, what's, what's coming um, out? You know, what's in the pipeline? Well, for, for starters, I do want to, kind of get on the grind for eggs war eow because episode one premiered on youtube i think like a few months ago and so i want to get episode two done obviously it's just hard because when you have like a micro budget like there's only so much you can do like look i'm trying to find a location and locations for me is mainly like the, the stuff that kind of halts production because i really don't have any connections to anyone and when you want to get some cool locations, you know, it's all about who you know and who can get you that location that you want for your shot. And I only have those connections. So I've been working on getting some kind of like warehouse like urban areas, but it's, it's tough, you know? Yeah, I got you. Yeah. But I do want to kind of get in the, kind of get Eggs War going. And I was thinking of making a Halloween sequel short film that takes place on the same night. Okay. Because I don't know if you know this, but have you seen Halloween Kills? I have not yet, no. My short film takes place during the events of that movie. Okay. I don't know if that was clear. I put it in the title, I think, but I don't know if it was that uh, clear. Yeah, the, and so I the Halloween to movies are kind of... I, I have, you know, yeah. like like I told you, you know, like um, the the Rob Zombie ones and like the first one are like the only ones that I've really seen, so... Yeah. For me, I, you know, that's kind of like one of the my least favorite slashers, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, I, so it's like that's I was a big fan of the Rob Zombie ones, but that's just me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I was always a big fan of at least the first one and the 2018 one. The 2018 one's probably up there with my top favorite movies, actually. Um, but yeah, I want to make a sequel for the Halloween one. I'll title it something I don't know yet. Okay. But um, besides Eggs of War and that one, um, I really don't know. You gonna make That's a feature? It. You know, are you thinking about that ever I, down the line? I, I don't like making feature movies. You don't. I don't. I'll I'll help out with them, okay. but 
when you make your own and like you're in charge of everything, like directing and writing and everything and editing, it's a lot of pressure to put on one person. That's fair. I, I, would, I get that. I would do it if I had a team of people to help me out, but I don't. So I got yeah, you. It, just, it wasn't that fun. I'm much more comfortable with making just like a 10 minute short. That's my cup of tea, you know? It's it's more fun for me because it's not just a strenuous, long, tedious experience that drags on for like months after months. You know, it's short films are fun. I and get it, it. Yeah. No offense to people that make feature films. In actuality, I give them major props like you. I, I give you major props for making pesticide. I must have, God, I watched that like four or five times now. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, feature films are not, uh, they're not easy to make. Um, but that's just my opinion, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm much more, I'm much better with making just short films and like episodic stuff. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with making short form content, you know, especially nowadays with how YouTube is formatted and everything, you know, with the algorithm, you know, I, I, I get it. There's not a lot of, really money or you know anything that you know towards features you know so i get that aspect of it and even then you know you're able to get more done you know like i have an entire spreadsheet of movie ideas you know i'm not gonna be able to create and get all those movies out there i'm only gonna be able to do a select few you know whereas with you you know you do more short form stuff and that works a lot better honestly if you want to get those ideas out there yeah and if you look at like um like not the attention span but like the duration of the viewers um, that viewed your video, most of them, for me at least, only stay for like the first four minutes. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, I got to keep them short. You know, I, I got to keep them entertained. And not to say that a full length feature film can't entertain you the entire way, but it's just going to be much more difficult. Right. Yeah. And you're able to kind of establish more what you're able to accomplish as a filmmaker in yeah. that in those minutes. You know, not everyone's going to sit down and watch a whole feature. So yeah, I get it definitely. for sure. And besides, I don't have the ideas to uh, constitute a full length motion picture. My ideas are meant for like this, like a 10 minute, 15 minute duration. Sure. See, see my mentality for it was, you know, when I was in middle school and at the start of high school, you know, I had this um, stupid YouTube series called the Cole show. Oh yeah. And uh, you know, I, I just kind of gave up on it. It didn't really end. And wow. so, um, I ended up like editing all the quote unquote episodes together and it came out to like three hours long in total. And that was like, maybe I want to say like a, maybe like a year or two of work. And so I just kind of figured, well, if I'm able to do that, you know, in a year and a year or two, then why not be able to make a feature? You know? So that was just kind of my reasoning yeah. for doing so many features. And, you know, now I'm getting, you know, I'm, I'm still doing it. So obviously, you know, it's for yeah. me, I like it just because it's a big kind of monumental thing. I'm just kind of giving my philosophy here. I'm not, you know, ripping on you no, by any means. Because I, I still love doing my short films, you know. I mean, you and I, we, we just worked on one career minor leaguer. So it's like, you know, it's it's great to do the, the smaller stuff, obviously. But thanks again for inviting me to help you out. <laughs> I, I appreciate all the help for real. Oh. Um, yeah. Um, oh, sorry. What? No, I was just saying, though, like, you know, everyone's different with their workload and what they're able to take on. And it's not even a question of quality over quantity because if you're able to put out a lot of stuff and they're all good quality, then, you know, you might as well. And that's kind of what I'm saying about your channel. You know, you're oh, able to consistently put out great stuff. And that's really, oh, that matters sure. more than one great video as opposed to like, you know, 10 great videos that you'll put out in a year. So well, that's very kind. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm just kind of just rambling on just my thoughts in general on it. No, you know? I, I no worries, man. But you know, the way I saw it is that by the time that Exor is completely done, because I'm only going to have two seasons. Uh, it's going to be about the exact same length that a full full length motion picture would be anyways. So I was thinking that um, when it's all when it's all done and edited and all, all the episodes are published and premiered on YouTube, I'm going to do what you did. And hopefully, uh, at least, um, the idea is to do what you did and kind of get a theater of Marcus. And just show them all at the same time with the credits cut out. So it, the episode one leads into two, leads into three, and so on and so forth. Th that, that'll that be cool, honestly. Because that, that yeah. basically is then a movie, you know? Yeah, it's the, it's, it's going to be about, I don't know, an hour and a half, hopefully. But I'm going to show them all one after another. And 
it's gonna go it's gonna show like the everything from point a all the way to episode 17 i think it is okay yeah that's got to be around at least oh geez math time um like 170 minutes basically you know they're all about if every episode is around 10 minutes times that by 17 that's 170 right yeah yeah, math wasn't my strong suit. So. <laughs> Mine either. <laughs> Believe me. Um, but yeah, so do you ever feel uh, discouraged by the YouTube like studio system with the way that they show you with you know your analytics and stuff and like your top ten videos? I, like, do you ever feel discouraged by looking at those stats? I don't look at those stats honestly. Okay. It makes me feel bad. So <laughs> I don't. Fair so enough. I guess I guess it does discourage me a little bit. Like the few times I've looked at it, I try I try I try to stay away from looking at it because it's not about the subs to me. I just have fun doing what I do. Yeah, one hundred percent. I could have ten subs and I genuinely wouldn't care. I just have way too much fun to care. <laughs> I was just asking just because that's something that I know that a few people kind of deal with, you know, that are creators, and I wanted to kind of know your take on that of views and everything and how that short of that sort of shapes what you put if out i can break 100 views which isn't a lot in the grand scheme of things but to me personally that's fine with me okay yeah yeah 100 views is you know a fairly good threshold i'd say yeah, yeah I, I just my goal is to kind of this is going to be challenging obviously but i kind of want to find not a niche group of people but just a demographic that i can kind of I can that they would like eggs of war because this is a passion project of mine. It's been in the works for a very long time, just the production and preparing it. And I really enjoy it a lot. And it's a personal production to me, which is silly because it's called eggs of war and it's just stupid as hell, but it's just, it's fun to me and I have a good time doing it. And I hope that I'll find a group of people that will watch it because if I could, I would, I don't think they would regret it. So let's break down Eggs of War. Um, let's, you know, explain it to people who don't know what it is yet. Um, yes. Kind of give me like, you know, the pitch, you know, or what's, what's that is basically my, my number one priority right now. It's uh, I'm trying to build this kind of a small scale cinematic universe. Not, not like, obviously not like the MCU, not like the grand scale of that, but um, it's a series that takes place in modern day and it follows the story of this guy, a former detective who becomes the target of this sinister criminal underground organization after he survives a a terrorist attack. And he, after surviving it, he is the only one to ever survive. And so he now has this target on his head and the company wants him dead because he's the one loose end that can pose a threat to their entire operation. And so he, there's fight scenes, there's foot chases, and so the, the stakes only grow higher as the episodes go on and on and on. And um, hopefully you'll be on the edge of your seat because I do take pride in like the fight scenes I make. I coordinate them all, and um, he's got to beat the bad guys, take down the organization once and for all, and preserve hope for his city. So you know your fight scenes are extremely impressive. From you know, from what I see, I mean, I can't do that. You know, with fight choreography, that's so in left field. You know, um, how did you kind? Of, was that like instinctual with how you shoot your fight scenes? Did you take inspiration from a specific you know film series or a, a director, or was it just something you just kind of you know learned as you went along? You know, how how did that kind of come to be? I don't watch movies. Yeah, that often. I just figured it out on my own. I made I I watched a few YouTube videos on it, and then I kind of did my own thing because, like the all, all the videos I watch, like recommended that you like have like every punch is a different take or a different shot, and like you want like a shaky cam, and I hate shaky cam. Not gonna lie, I prefer a nice like gimbal s- smooth sweeping motion, or, like maybe a three sixty around. The actors like I think the one fight scene that I remember watching to date was um something in Aquaman. I think it was the beginning when like the the bad guys break into the lighthouse. I don't know if you saw Aquaman. Yeah, I've seen that opening though. Yeah, James Wan directed it. I think. Yeah, James Wan is is like fantastic with the way that he frames the shots. Yeah, like his three sixty camera motions, and I dig those a lot. They look so cool. 
but yeah, um, I really like like those lawn takes, not like just cut here, cut here, shaggy cam, like Liam Neeson style things. Yeah, no offense, Liam Neeson, I love him, <laughs> but um, uh, I just I like longer takes where we can actually see what the heck's happening. Like out of the movies that I have watched, my pet peeve is fight scenes that I can't understand what's going on. If I can't understand what's going on in the fight scene and I, I can't even tell who's punching who, why should I care? You know? Right. Yeah. I, I think a great example of good fight scenes are like the John Wick movies. Absolutely. Those those have like just such incredible choreography and the framing is great. Um but even not like modern I guess, you know, where like it takes place in modern day, like the Northmen had fantastic fight scenes too. I don't know if you saw I that never one. Saw that. Was it, good? it was fantastic. And so they that was one where they really just kind of held it back. You know, like there was mm-hmm. like a big kind of gap between the, where the camera was and where the actors were in it. It really right. benefits it too. Cause then they didn't, right. they couldn't really use that as a crutch to hide the bad choreography. Yeah. Which I noticed but, in, um, in your stuff though, you do that though, where you keep the gap, you know, like there's a big space between the actors and the camera and, and it, it yeah. looks clean, you know, it doesn't look like you're oh, just right. trying to figure out a choreography, you know, trying to figure it out on the spot, at least. Yeah. How I see it. No, you know? we, we take pride in making sure the choreography is clean and solid and down pad. And and I haven't seen a lot of movies, but not, now that you mentioned, I have seen John Wick, all of them, and I love them a lot. The fight scenes are just impeccable in those movies. And I think actually not to mention, I do take inspiration from John Wick because their fight scenes aren't really like, Cut here, cut here, cut here, like shaky. Really, you, you can understand what's happening, and it focuses on making sure that it's well, or, uh, not orchestrated, but well choreographed, and it's they're really good. Yeah. So you're also an avid fisherman, you know, just judging yeah. by your channel and everything. Um, how'd that start? You know, how how'd you start? You know, fishing and everything. Was that just something you grew up doing? No, actually, no. I didn't fish for a long time when I was a kid. I kind of found it boring. But one year, I went to my uncle's cabin up north in Wisconsin, and we went on a fishing trip on his fishing boat. And that's kind of the start of it. When I I caught a rock bass, I don't know. It's and that kind of started my love for it because just being out on the water, not even being on a boat necessarily, but just being on the water, whether it be a shore, dock, boat, I don't care. It's just fun. You don't catch anything, I don't care. It's called fishing, not catching, you know. That's what you yeah, always said. Yeah. Um, and that kind of started my love for it. You know, I, I noticed that you have, you know, a video on your channel where you were ice fishing. You know, for me, yeah. that, that freaks me out. I don't mess around with ice. Um, you know, but like. When what, it's 12 inches. Yeah, I know. I'm a big guy, though. <laughs> like, cars drive on the ice and they're fine. I know. I just, that weirds me out, though, man. <laughs> Yeah, I understand that. But that's why I, I always carry my ice picks. So that in the off chance, the very, very small chance that they do break through, I can, you know, get get it, my, a grip on the ice and pull myself up and roll away. Fair enough. <laughs> For me, no thanks, man. <laughs> you know, I'm a big guy. I'm like an elephant on the ice, man. I, you hear one crack and you'll just see me go right under. <laughs> yeah, but I, I only go on when I know it's going to be safe. I don't go on like four inches like some people. But Fair enough. Yeah, so, my dad would never let me go on four inches of ice. <laughs> um, we mentioned this, you know, because we've been shooting Wayward Sons, but we mentioned this while driving over to one of the shooting locations um, yeah. that you've been trying Blender out. Um, what's your take on Blender? You know, how far along are you with learning that? I'm just starting now. It's okay. so confusing. <laughs> I've watched so many videos and I can't get the hang of it. I think I'm going to stop. <laughs> I'm in the same boat as you. I have it downloaded. I opened it like four times and I'm just like, this is so confusing. I don't understand it. I've watched so many tutorials and they always go way too fast. I don't understand. Maybe it's just not for me. I do want to get into more VFX work because the VFX I do now usually sucks. But I don't know. Maybe Blender's not for me. Who knows? Um, I, I saw your video where you get hit in the face with the CGI frying pan. Oh, yeah. Was that Blender? No, I found a CGI frying pan green screen video on YouTube, oh, okay. and I just used it. <laughs> um, I that, probably should have given credit, but... <laughs> it's, it's interesting, though, to see that, because if the title wasn't there, I wouldn't have known that was CG, which I think really? is kind of funny. Um, yeah. But yeah, I uh, 
just I'm, I'm I was very fascinated when I found out that you you know did movies because for people that don't know I figure we we could say this I mean you know we went to high school together you know yeah. so um kind of in the same friend group for like a little bit and uh, little bit. but you know I I had no clue that you made movies you know until you, I think you might have yeah. emailed me one or texted me or whatever about um what camera I use but otherwise like I had no clue yeah yeah. I think the first time like we kind of talked about collabing was when you were going to be in Eggs of War and you like, do you DM me oh, yeah. after I made that post about looking for actors. Yeah. Um, I, uh, you know, cause I did acting throughout high school and theater, yeah. you know, I was, I was a gross the theater problem? kid. Unfortunately. Yes, I was. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no. And I, I think that was really cool for like kind of opening up my palette a bit and kind of learning how to direct by seeing other people direct so yeah. that that definitely helped now do you consider yourself more of a director or more of like a kind of cinematographer person behind the camera you know like how what do you classify say, yourself uh, as i say director director okay yeah director. i, I just ask because you know you, you're you're like a one-man crew of everything you know yeah. so i'm just kind of asking you like where do you where do you like you know do you want to be pigeonholed into one thing or because i know that you also do your own I music love, for yeah, stuff too i would love to have more people to help me out because it's a lot of work <laughs> you know writing directing um coordinating fight scenes and editing i make most of the music most of the time um color grading it's it's tedious and it's kind of exhausting sometimes but it's worth it in the end but if someone offered to like help me out and i would i would be an idiot to say no because <laughs> i would love some help yeah especially on the big shoots you know every every person counts you know and they're helping and everything so yeah it really that really is true every person counts even like you could be holding a a, a light stand and I, thank you for doing that i would genuinely appreciate it yeah everything counts so um to kind of shift focus a little bit to recent stuff you know we've been doing um you've helped me now on two shoots with yeah. um career minor leaguer and wayward sons and so yes. um you know we got we got wayward sons coming in the pipeline like oh geez like next year i think um oh. you know but i don't know you know there's there's just so many projects that we're both simultaneously working on that it's cool that we're able to actually yeah. work on you know something together because i know that we've been kind of talking about this then covid hit you know so then we're able to yeah, we're finally able to actually work together on something yeah it's, i mean this has been long overdue it really uh, is, so yeah. Cool. <laughs> so we, we've been talking about this since, like, what, last year? And... I think so, yeah. And so... Yeah, I, I really have fun with you, man. It's a lot of fun. It really is, yeah. And I was I worried. I was really <laughs> worried when you, um, you know, because I'm like, oh, my God. It's like a total clash because, you know, I remember when I shot with you, when we did that one scene for Eggs of War, I was yeah, like... talking about that day. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. Like, I'm thinking he is, like, the most professional person ever. And we are Me? not... Yeah, well, like, when we were working together, like, when I was acting for you, I was thinking, like, this guy's way more professional than what we no. do. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, my mom was filming. What do you mean? <laughs> well, I mean, in terms of attitude, we'll put it that way. Because, like, oh, okay. you know, I think the turning point for you was when we were filming Career Minor Leaguer in Nick's basement. And I proceeded mm -hmm. to just grab the big boom mic and I just farted right into it when Layla had the headphones on. And you, I remember that, yeah. you like out loud were like, "Ew, oh my god!" And I think I was like, "Oh yeah, shit." <laughs> no, that, that we're, was we're, funny. We're animals. <laughs> like, no, we'll funny. be making the most like you know depressing movie ever, and then behind the scenes, we're just constantly just doing the most dumb shit possible. That was a lot of fun that day. I had a good time. But yeah, I, I am excited though with working with you more. You know, I mean. Yeah, me too. Eggs of War, let yeah. me know when we're filming. Yeah, if you ever want to be in an episode, I do have a role for somebody that I requires height, and I think you <laughs> accomplish that. So Yeah, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm really busy, obviously, with Wayward Sons, yeah, you know, but like, just let me know what day you need uh, me, and I'll see if I can make it work. But I mean, if I, the role I was thinking is only in like a couple of scenes, so I think, sure. I think we could probably manage it. I'm sure. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, there. I, I'm gonna. By the way, I'm going to include your channel link in the description, so oh, everybody go, you know, shout them out. But one thing I wanted to ask you about this is we kind yeah. we kind of got sidetracked here, but um, was with Halloween. You know, oh, right. would you say that 
Michael Myers is your favorite slasher villain. Like, I want to know who your who's your favorite, and then like yeah, definitely not Michael Myers. I've always been a fan of the Halloween movies. Okay, maybe not like the sequels, but Halloween, kind of Halloween two, um, and then Halloween twenty eighteen. Okay, I wasn't a big fan of Halloween Kills. They just yeah, it wasn't that good. To Do me. you like but, Halloween three, Season of the Witch? Because that that one I love. That's like one of my favorites. Without Michael Myers, it's the no. one without Michael Myers. <laughs> no, I don't. I didn't like it. Okay. Because I think it's genius that they were going to do like an anthology thing, and then people. Yeah, I was going like to say it. the same thing. John Carpenter wanted to do like an anthology thing, but audiences didn't like that. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I think it, it's interesting though what would have happened if they would have done that and just gone with an anthology kind of thing. Yeah, um, you know, it, it isn't, it's an interesting uh, t- uh, thing that if done right, it could be pretty cool. Right. And, you know, we talked about, you know, your short films and everything. Uh, did you ever get into, like, the Twilight Zone at all? Oh, uh, yeah. I love Twilight Zone. That's, as a like, kid. short form, you know, content, mm-hmm. you know, and same with, like, the Edgar Allan Poe, you know, short mm-hmm. stories, you know. So, like, um, were there anything, like, was there anything like that where you kind of realized that like, this is viable? You know, maybe even, like, a YouTube channel or something like that where you were like, okay, so they're able to consistently put out content like this. You know, I'm not alone here. I don't think it was the Twilight Zone specifically that kind of showcase that for me but i don't know um or films or fan films like just like the fans make or or like batman fan films uh, i i just watched a great one last night and i think to myself if, if these guys can make this for the same budget i have then why can't i you know? yeah i i love fan films a lot um you know i i remember some of the ones that were like really old back in the day that was like uh i'm trying to think it was, it's i think it's called like troopers or something and it's like a parody of cops but it's with like the stormtroopers from star wars and they're on like oh, yeah? tatooine Storm. it's hilarious you know and like um what what fans are able to do is honestly a, better than what the studios are able to do most of the time because they understand the characters yeah really well for the most part and yeah it shows they know what fans like because they are fans. Yeah, they're not like suits in an office, you know. Yeah, that that that's why I hate when studios take down, you know, the fan films. Like I remember there was some controversy with the Warhammer fan films that were coming out at the time, you know, with 40k. Uh, that that was its own debacle, you know. But have you ever dealt with copyright problems on your channel that you could speak of? I should say, you uh, know. No, I have not actually. Okay. I make most of the music myself. Like the, the Halloween one, if I would have just like ripped off or like stolen, like, like used like a YouTube to MP3 <laughs> converter for like take a to take the Halloween theme, I probably would have gotten uh, a copyright claim. But I made my own theme. It would, not my own theme, but I made my own version of the Halloween theme. Okay. With my keyboard. Yeah. So I, I kind of avoided that. That works, you know, because. YouTube copyright, you know, the way that they do it, it's just such a bitch most of the time yeah, that you no, just don't even want to deal with it. All. I think there's only one thing, like this like 10 second bit of music I used in Eggs War episode one that got a claim. I didn't get a strike, but just like a claim so I couldn't get monetized. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's bizarre how they'll just get you for like 10 seconds of something. It's I, just, I don't understand it. Yeah. But no. Uh, oh well. So what YouTubers do you watch, you know, or, or if any, you know, like, is there anything that you uh, just, when you're editing something, you just put on the channel or just really yeah, anything, watch, you know? Even like filmmaking YouTubers or just YouTubers in general? Anything, you know, anything in general. Uh, Film Riot. I love Film Riot. They're awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. D for Darius. He's a filmmaker, YouTuber. Um, Corridor Crew. They make a lot of great VFX. Uh, I love work. their stuff. Yeah. I love their like their reaction series, like yeah. reacting to CGI fight scenes and stuff. Um, who else do I watch? I watch Cody Ko, Dan Gonzalez, Drew Gooden, Curtis Connor. I don't know if you know those people. I but do. They do like, yeah, they're funny. They do commentary stuff. Uh, Jarvis Johnson, I think his name is. Um, Eddie Burback. Hmm. Cinematos Ken, I think his name is. He like this commentary. Oh too. yeah, yeah. Uh, that's about it, yeah. Yeah, I uh, because I just I find it fascinating, you know, when you ask people who upload on YouTube, you know, what they watch, and normally it's just not really what they upload, you know, those type of videos. I just think that's fascinating, oh. you know. 
Would wouldn't you, mind getting into like commentary stuff. I was just going to ask, you know, would you ever want to get into that kind of stuff? Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind getting into it. I just, I don't like stirring up controversy, you know, because like if they had reached out to me and they said, like, why would you do this? I, I would feel <laughs> bad because I don't, I want to make fun of anybody, you know? Yeah. You can make like lighthearted jokes, I guess, but I was, I feel bad doing that. So what uh, about like film tutorials? You know how to do this, how to do that. You know, would you ever want to do something like that? Didn't you like your trial and error video? Yeah, I kind of did. Uh, I'm thinking about bringing those back though and doing it more with yeah. face cam and I don't think Alana edit. Personally, I I wouldn't do it myself because I don't have enough experience to, in my opinion. But because I'm still in the process of learning. Like the workarounds in Premiere, and especially the After Effects. I hate After Effects. I do too. <laughs> I hate having to track stuff. That's like the worst. Oh, it's, it's such a bitch, dude. It's so annoying. It's because like nine out of ten times, it can't find the tracking point somehow. Yep. So I, I just gotta. I'm screwed, I guess, because then I gotta ma- manually do it. Rotoscoping's annoying. And so to edit, do you use Premiere? And you know, is that pretty much Premiere and After Effects? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For me, my go-to, mm-hmm. that's, you know, it's Premiere and Photoshop. Um, yeah. And then for audio, you know, what do you use? Do you just stick with Premiere still or, you know? Just stick with Premiere, yeah. Okay. I, I just ask because sometimes I go into, you know, Adobe Audition or I even do. Yeah, I don't really do a lot Audacity. of. I don't stress the audio that much because I get the lav mics and they rarely fail me. So, I don't know. Fair enough. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, I kind of mentioned this briefly. I'm trying to make like this cinematic universe. Um, so there's a different short film on my channel called Rider Manipulation. Okay. And I don't know if people know this. There's a plot twist in the end, but it's been uploaded for like a year, so I'm just gonna say it. Um, it takes place in the same universe as Eggs War. Okay. And so Rider's like the secret agent that works for the Raven City Police Department, and in Eggs War. They kind of briefly mentioned the RCPD, and that's the same thing. That's the department that Ryder works for. And so soon enough, in like the next coming year, I'm going to... The idea is to have some kind of crossover event. Okay. Where like Ryder and the people who makes war meet, and they team up. Because I love stuff like that in movies. Yeah, yeah. I don't know like how you feel about crossovers or like cinematic universes, but I like it. It's fun. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's cool. I I have something in the works. I'm not going to talk about it right now. Um, It does involve pesticide, but that's all I'm going to say. A sequel? I'm not going to, I'm not going to, after we, after we end the recording, I can tell you if you want. Okay, okay. um, Can I help with it? (laughs) Sure. Um, But I will say, I'm just trying, because I have the schedule lined up. We're aiming for a November release this year, so. November, um, okay. But yeah, it's, you know, I, I like it though when that kind of stuff happens and when it's more kind of indirect where you, you kind of realize that you put it together like, oh, wait, this is that, you know? Yeah. Um, cause I'm not really in the, the eggs of war lore. I'm still trying you to will be. figure that out. <laughs> so what you mean like understanding it or being an actor? I lost you again. I want... Okay, sorry. What was that? My audio cut out. Do you again. mean like? Do you mean like understanding it or being an actor in it? Understanding it, like the lore. You know, I'm just. Well, it's not that complicated. It's just a guy that an egg explodes in his kitchen. And then... Oh, I know. I just one of these days, I'm just gonna sit down and just get it. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I gotcha. But because I'm there's... more focused on the technical stuff. You know, when I'm watching it with your, you know, I'm like that with everything though, where I don't really pay yeah. attention to the story the first time around. I'm like, there's not much to get to that shot. <laughs> That's cool. There's not much. What? Uh, there's not much to understand yet because um, there's only one episode out, you know. But there was a previous Eggs Wars series that I actually got to like episode ten. I finished the first season, but then I scrapped it because due to things outside of my control, the main two leads had to leave the project, which sucked for sure. But I, I obviously I understood that. I ain't mad about that, but. It did suck though, because I had to rework everything and start a new clean slate, you know. Yeah. Well, at least then that way you're able to kind of redo it in a way, you know, kind of do it the right way and yeah. improve in a way. I mean, not saying that it was, you know, no, I, the first time around, but there, you know. There were things I didn't like about the series, like some things, I, some decisions I made. And so 
now I get to fix those things. And I like that. I had that same experience, you know, with Wayward Sons with last summer, how it sucked. And then I just went, oh, let's just remake yeah. it entirely. <laughs> I hate to say it, but sometimes you're better off just starting with a clean slate. Yeah, yeah. And that was, it sucks for sure doing it, but yeah, that I was, think the end you'll appreciate it. That was one thing that I really struggled with too, because I was just like, okay, how do I write around these scenes I already shot? And then you just kind of just figure out, you know what, let's just start from scratch. Like, problems. like, was it just, was it overexposed or what It was what mostly that because, you know, like I told you, I went from having my Nikon to, yeah. which, which did all the work for me. You know, I didn't have to worry about anything. And then I went from yeah. that to a Blackmagic camera which doesn't do all that for you unless you, you know, you hit auto, but then you move the camera and it changes everything. I didn't have a dandy filter, right? Yeah, no. So I just kind of just shot everything thinking it would be all right. You know, try to do run and gun, like you say, and it, it didn't, you know, and I had a lot applied. Black magic is not a running gun camera. It really isn't. You know, it, it ends up looking great though. Once you do figure it out, which I finally yeah. did, you know, cause you know, I did a music video and everything beforehand. So I oh. figured ah, I can do it, you know, but yeah. I mean, like and I say, though, it's, it's, not, it's trial and error. Yeah, definitely. And it's going to be in black and white now, too. It's not going to be in color. It, it's going to be in color now. Oh, I thought you said it's going to be black and white. Yeah, I sent in the group chat. You re the, 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 like, the teaser in black and white. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to stick with the color. I like the color grading. I'll drop it in the Discord right now just okay. so you could see it. Um, I think that's the right call because black and white kind of, no offense, it kind of reminds me of like a student film. Yeah, it's film. too student yeah. filmy. And while I did kind of have a purpose for this, I was just like, then there's no point. <laughs> it doesn't need to be. Um, there's this shot of Nick and Joe where they're getting out of their car and they're walking down the woods and it's right before they get lost. And, you know, I just wanted to have like one shot of it. And I was going to hold the camera, really the gimbal. Um, but my knee's been messed up now for like almost since oh, yeah. like almost March, maybe February. I think it was February, March, like early March. Maybe even April. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. But my knee's been messed up, so my mobility is bad. And so I had mm -hmm. you do it. You held the gimbal. Yeah. And then it was just me and Layla just, like, moving you I to where... My trying to keep me on the trail. <laughs> and you almost went down a few times, but I think it turned out pretty well. And you figured yeah. out how to use my gimbal, which was funny because I had no clue how to use it. Yeah, because you were on some setting that I wasn't familiar with. Yeah. And it was, like, tilting the camera on, like, a weird angle. It was, like, rolling it almost, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because you the setting that I do was pan follow, and mm -hmm. that's like the basic for me, like the basic setting. Yeah. That makes sense, at least for me. Mm -hmm. But I thought it turned out really good. Yeah. Could you send me that when it's all done? Yeah, for sure. I'll just try to just send you the, the raw one without any color correction, because I still got to do just some touching up, but I'll send it to you as soon as possible. I would, love, I would possible. love to see that. It might be compressed, but... <laughs> No one's going to know what we're talking about, and I think that's hilarious. So we'll just keep this all in. <laughs> they'll they'll know soon once it's out in like a year. But yeah, They'll know in a year. Yeah. They'll, they'll remember this in a year completely. <laughs> Even I'm interested. Um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, it was a pretty good discussion. Um, if you have anything yeah. else you want to plug, you know, social media, you know, uh, now's your chance. Uh, my Instagram is uh, Zach Menzies, Z-A-K. That's how you spell my name. I know it's weird. Um, YouTube, like it's gonna be in the description. Menzies Productions. I make lots of action, horror, uh, sometimes fishing, which is odd, I know, but basically whatever I enjoy. So if that interests you or sparks anything in you, feel free to sub, and I would appreciate it dearly. All right. Well, I think that just about wraps it up with this episode. Um, this has been Firewood Media Cast. Thank you everybody for watching. Peace yeah, out. Thanks a lot. Or listening. Whatever. I don't know. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs>